Sony has announced that the PS Plus collection, a new benefit for PS Plus members, will be available launch day on PlayStation 5. Sony will be rolling out a new benefit for PlayStation Plus subscribers come launch day for PlayStation 5. PS Plus will allow PlayStation 5 owners to have an access to a library of PS4 titles at no extra cost. There are a select number of games included in this collection announced so far. These include Bloodborne, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy 15, God of War, Monster Hunter World, Persona 5 and more. It also gives those who haven't picked up these games in the past a chance to experience them. With the announcement of God of War Ragnarok in the works, releasing next year, this will be a great time to catch up on the God of War title if you haven't done so already. PlayStation 5 will be launching on November 12th for select regions and November 19th worldwide, along with the PS Plus collection. There's been a fair few happenings in Elder Scrolls Online this week, but I'll bring you up to speed. The end of the year-long content for The Dark Heart of Skyrim will be happening on November 2nd when the Elder Scrolls Online Mark of DLC is released. The upcoming DLC, now called Markov, will take players to Skyrim, in particular the Reach, which is a brand new zone focusing on an intriguing storyline that will complete the year of the content. There is also a new solo arena to challenge players. The prologue quest is now live and free for anyone who has the base game. A brand new in-game event also has been announced called Lost Treasures of Skyrim. Take up the ESO community challenge to unlock all three tiers of collectible rewards. This includes new cosmetics, a pet, a new house, and the very first collectible house guest, which is brand new to ESO. In order to reap these rewards, you will need to use the Antiquities system to unearth lost treasures. The most treasures discovered, the faster you and your fellow Greymoor players will gain some goodies. The end of the event will be on October 5th. Good news for current generation console players, as ZeniMax have shared they will continue to support current platforms for ESO, and this includes PlayStation 4. With the news on a certain acquisition this week, had left many wondering about the future, but more on that later. Elder Scrolls Online Mark of DLC will be releasing on November 2nd for PC, Mac and Stadia, then on November 10th for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. In a surprising turn of events, Microsoft announced this week that they are acquiring Bethesda Softworks and ZeniMax Media in a deal worth $7.5 billion. The acquisition grants Microsoft a number of major RPG franchises, with it including Fallout and The Elder Scrolls. According to a statement shared by Bethesda's Vice President of PR and Marketing, Pete Hines, on Bethesda's website, the acquisition by Microsoft won't change Bethesda's vision when it comes to making great games. Microsoft also acquired Obsidian and NXR Entertainment back in 2018, which means they've got quite the number of RPGs under their belt. With Xbox Series X also releasing this November, things only seem to be looking up for Microsoft. In case you've missed it, we also have a video on our channel analysing the news and what this means for the future for some of these franchises such as Fallout. CD Projekt Red have shared that Cyberpunk 2077 will have a slightly shorter campaign than The Witcher 3, as many players did not finish it, according to the developer. A post spotted recently by Reset Era user Saucy Carp Dog during Co Carnage's stream shares that Cyberpunk 2077 will be a shorter game by comparison to CD Projekt Red's previous RPG, The Witcher 3. The statement made by Patrick K. Miles was shown during the Night City Wire episode that the developer has been releasing to share new details about the upcoming game. The statement explains why Cyberpunk 2077 will have a shorter campaign than The Witcher 3, mainly due to the fact that many players simply didn't finish the main story due to how long it was. This can be argued though, it really depends on the type of player you are. Some will want to explore every nook and cranny of a game to gain that 100% completionist rate, while others may want to take more of a casual laid back approach. It seems due to this feedback from fans, CD Projekt Red have decided a shorter campaign would go over better. There will be multiple endings though, so a number of playthroughs could be in order depending on the requirements to reach those endings. What do you think about a shorter campaign compared to The Witcher 3? Let us know in the comments below. Cyberpunk 2077 will release on November 19th on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. The second DLC for Neo 2 called Darkness in the Citadel is arriving on October 15th on PlayStation 4. The new DLC will add a number of new additions including several new storylines to experience, plus some new challenging bosses to test your metal. It also adds new weapon, armor, yokai, guardian spirit, soul cores, and much more. Players will be able to pick up a new armor set. The new weapon will focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat. In this new expansion, players will head to Kyoto where a shrine will transport them to the Heian period. It is here where they will be joined by some heroes to team up and fight hordes of yokai. 
More details will be released as we get closer to October, but it sounds to be an exciting new DLC for Neo 2 fans. It seems we'll be waiting a little bit longer for Baldur's Gate 3 to go into Early Access, as Larian have now announced it will be launching on Early Access on October 6th instead of September 30th. The delay was announced on a Twitter post that explained that it was due to a few unexpected delays and stability issues, but by delaying the release by a week means that they can also do some more last minute checks for stability and localization. While the news surely is disappointing, as we'll have to be a little bit more patient as fans are eager to get their hands on Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access, it's just a little bit longer and should be worth the wait. There was also some further news about relationships in Baldur's Gate 3. Players will be able to romance NPCs as an option. This will happen at the party's camp, where relationships feel real and feel like the relationships you have in the real world. This means those romantic relationships head into rather steamy territory. Larian shared these new details in the community update. Baldur's Gate 3 will now enter early access on Steam for PC and Stadia starting October 6. Square Enix held a near TGS 2020 special programming broadcast during the Digital Tokyo Game Show 2020, revealing some more details about near replicant version 1.2. 47448739, which is the remastered version. One big detail to drop is that it will be releasing on April 22nd, 2021 in Japan and then on April 24th worldwide for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Steam. The gameplay shows some of the combat out in the open world, including some of the weapons players can get their hands on and showed what pairing will look like. Pre-orders are now available on the official Square website, including physical pre-orders with standard edition available for $59.99 and the white snow edition, which is essentially a collector's edition for $159.99. During a talk held at the 23rd Japan Media Arts Festival, which spotlighted Sakura Shadows Die Twice, a panel hosted by Takita Takahashi and Sayawaka who read statements from Hidetaka Miyazaki, confirming some previously much rumored details about Elden Ring. The section of the talk was translated and appeared on Reset Era, Elden Ring will have a deep lore behind it. In fact, it will be deeper than anything they've done before. But what's interesting about the statement shared is it went on to confirm some of the themes of the game, which are a testament to George R. R. Martin's previous work, calling it a very painful fantasy drama and sets to hit some rather human themes such as racism, politics, citizenship, and so on. From what Sayawaka shares, while the game is fantasy, there will be a very human perspective. How these new details help to quench your unbearable Elden Ring first? If not, you can drop by our Elden Ring wiki for all the latest. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits. And budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness. Yeah.